Hey guys, it's Danny B, and welcome back to Danny B Needs Minute, and we do have a lot of things to discuss, but first, I want to introduce you to one special person. Me! Hey guys, I'm Claudia B. We are so happy to finally be married. Guys, this is my beautiful wife, and she's happy to be here. But she doesn't have to do the episode. I can do that part. Thanks for showing up, honey. Yep. All right, turn it back over to Danny B. And I will indeed take it over from here. Guys, let's discuss what's been happening in the world of NASCAR. The first thing to discuss is almost two weeks after Zach Novak wrapped up the Peak Antifreeze iRacing Series Championship, we did start the 2019 iRacing Pro Series as they had their first race at Daytona. The winner would be John Gorlinski, followed by Alex McCollum, Eric J. Smith, Michael Guest, Adam Gillen, Bob Bryant, Graham Boland, Jeremy Allen, Colin Keister, and Cody Bias would round up the top 10 in the first race of the season. And great news if you are a fan of Hendrick Motorsports that they announced that their partnership with Hertz will continue at least through 2021. Now we talked about the beginning of the 2019 iRacing Pro Series, but there was another esports version of NASCAR that wrapped up their season this week as the NASCAR Heat Pro League had their final race of the year at ISM Raceway, and well, things got kind of controversial. Right at the end of the last race, there was some huge controversy between the Stuart Haas Racing Team and the Levine Family Gaming Team, and well, it looked as though the 95 just straight up ran right into the Stuart Haas team, but there was rumors that the 95 said his tire went down going into turn 4. Needless to say, things looked kind of whack, and even though the 95 team would win that last race, uh, things were kind of weird as it looks like the two teams tied in overall points between the two teams. However, the tiebreaker was the number of laps led, which would go to the Stuart Haas team, and thus the Stuart Haas gaming team would be declared your 2019 inaugural NASCAR Heat Pro League Champions. Quite the eventful finish. Let's see what next year brings. Alright, now I keep hyping this up. At the Nashville Fairgrounds Speedway, their annual All-American 400 is coming up very soon. It's coming up this weekend and a new entry has been announced as legendary late model driver Bubba Pollard has officially entered into the All-American 400. Quite the stacked field it's looking like here in Nashville. I don't even know if I'll get to go attend this race because I know I'll be working Saturday and probably have to do some stuff on Sunday the 3rd but if you can make it to this race, go check it out. Looking like a pretty stacked field. And speaking of concrete ovals, Dover made a big announcement this week as they announced they are reducing their capacity by 29,000 seats, going from 83,000 to 54,000. Honestly, I think this is a great move on their part. It should look a little bit more full now that we were reducing some of these seats. I think what they had was just a little too much for the crowd they were bringing in. And here's some big news to follow up on. If you were a fan of the Canapolis Intimidators, they have now officially announced their new name is the Canapolis Cannonballers. And their little logo, well, some people People say the little gentleman kind of resembles Dale Earnhardt, got a little mustache and everything, so maybe it's still a little bit of a reference to the Intimidator they were named after, but of course, they can't use that name no more. And if you want to know why, well, I got two great videos that you may enjoy. One is called The Rise and Fall of Dale Earnhardt Incorporated. The other one is Five Things If Dale Earnhardt Never Died. Check those two out, and you probably know why. Heads up, this is a big week for us finding out about new race teams coming into NASCAR. The big one was a big shock to a lot of people as it caught everybody off guard. We will have a new Cup Series team starting at Homestead Miami Speedway, and hopefully we'll see them a lot more in 2020. Rocking to number 50, and if you look at it, they snuck in 50 and 0, will be the new team of the Money Racing Team owned by you know it, Floyd Mayweather. What an announcement. The driver is to be announced at this time. It'd be awesome to see it be like some big driver returning. Do I see that likely? No, not really. Uh, everything I've heard sounds like JJ Yaley may be the driver for Homestead, but we'll see. It may be something different. But this could be another good opportunity for someone like Daniel Hamrick who still needs a ride for next year. We'll see. Sadly, over the weekend at Martinsville, Matt Tift was took to the hospital on a stretcher, and it would turn out that he actually had a C at the racetrack and unfortunately this has meant that Matt Crafton had to replace him in Sunday's race and now we found out that John Hunter Nemechek will have to replace him for the rest of the season. Unfortunately Matt Tiff will not be racing anymore in 2019. Please get well soon Matt and we would love to see you back at the racetrack in 2020. Alright so let's talk about this truck series race. Where do we begin? I mean let's talk about Todd Gillen. I mean he got his Oh yeah that's right. No one got to see the finish of the Truck Series race. I don't know what happened, but for some reason, Fox Sports 1 just cut away to the race towards the end of it. And from what I understand, they just cut back to some football. Uh, yeah, weird. 
But by doing this, we did miss Todd Gillen getting his first win of his Truck Series career for Kyle Busch Motorsports. But many people now think, could this be the last time he would win in one of Kyle Busch's trucks? As he made a controversial statement over the radio towards Kyle Busch when he got that win, telling Kyle Busch that he can stay in his blanking motorhome. Uh, that might not be the best thing to say to your team owner, but um, I guess his dad owns a team, so Todd may be okay. I'll say this. This has led me to believe, and I'm not the only one who's fought this, no one's quite sure how Kyle Busch Motorsports is looking for next year. There's been some rumors about Kyle that I wish not to say on my show, but they're out there. You may have heard about them. And there have now been announcements that Harrison Burton is going up, and supposedly Riley Herbst may also be going up into the Xfinity Series in the 18 full-time. Many people are wondering now if Kyle Busch Motorsports will be around in 2020, and if if this kind of statement is coming out from Todd Gillen, it makes me wonder what all is known behind the scenes that we are not meant to know yet. That's just my opinion on this, and I'll keep it at that. However, even though Todd Gillen did say those things towards Kyle Busch, he did apologize the next day for those comments. And then in the Cup Series race on Sunday at Martinsville, well, things were pretty interesting in certain ways. Some people said the race was kind of boring at times, but it did offer its fair share of excitement. Chase Elliott was putting on a good show, having to come from the rear of the field after he blew an engine in practice, but unfortunately he would have right rear axle problems, and it came at a time when he was coming his way through the field, he was moving really good. He started in the back and he was all the way up to 5th place, but Chase Elliott, now not looking good to go into the championship 4 right now. And then also Martin Truex Jr., as I kind of predicted on the NASCAR Weekly Podcast, he did go on to get his first win at Martinsville, and it was a big accomplishment. He's been working a long time to get better at that track, and he finally went out, and he won that big race. However, there was some drama between between some playoff contenders as we saw Denny Hamlin and Joey Logano get into a big fight after the race. It left many people debating on who was in the right and who was in the wrong, but Denny Hamlin might have just gained a few people's support with his funny little impression of Joey Logano. I gotta admit, that was pretty good. And there was also some on-track drama between Eric Almarola and Kyle Busch. Following the incident between the two, well, Eric Almarola didn't like the way he was raced by Kyle Busch, and even though Eric Almarola isn't in the playoffs, he said he's gonna make life a living hell for Kyle Busch these next three weeks. And from one Stewart Haas racing driver to the owner of the team, we actually found out that Tony Stewart will be getting back behind the wheel of a Cup Series race car for Stewart Haas Racing, but not in a Cup Series race or anything like that. Instead, what Tony will be doing is he'll be doing a demonstration run at the Circuit of the Americas Road Course at Texas along with the Haas F1 team. This will be pretty cool though to see Tony Stewart back behind the wheel. It'll be the first time he's behind the wheel of one of these Stewart Haas Racing Fords. Big announcement this week from Richard Childers Racing as we found out that Austin Dillon's crew chief will be changing in 2020 as Justin Alexander will be coming on board to be his crew chief for the 2020 season. Here's some pretty cool sponsorship news. Stuart Haas Racing will be welcoming in T-Mobile and Walmart for a one race deal at the Texas race this weekend and it'll be a pretty nice blue car and pretty nice to see Walmart in the sport. We, I'm really surprised that we don't see him here that often. Following the incident between Joey Logano and Denny Hamlin at Martinsville, NASCAR announced that one of the Penske crew members would be suspended for one race following his accident actions in that fight. It's okay in certain ways for crews to try to uh, hold their driver back, but where it crosses the line is what this crew member did as he grabbed Denny Hamlin and he literally tossed him to the ground. He could have landed in a way that he could have hit his head, he could have suffered a concussion. That kind of behavior in NASCAR teams, that's where NASCAR draws a line. In this case, I'm with NASCAR on a decision to go ahead and suspend this guy for one race. And we have another new NASCAR team that appears to be coming in as team owner Sam Hunt, no not the country singer, and driver Colin Garrett are set to be teaming up to form Hunt Garrett Racing, and they are looking to be coming into the Xfinity Series for 2020. And finally, Pocono Raceway has announced the full schedule for the doubleheader at Pocono. On Saturday, we'll be seeing the 150 mile Truck Series race, and we'll be seeing a 325 mile NASCAR Cup Series race, and then on Sunday, we will see a 225 mile Xfinity Series race, and we will see a 350 mile Cup Series race. And finally, just one last bit of NASCAR news that I found out this week, Stephen Parsons will be joining 
running JD Motorsports this weekend in number 15 Chevrolet at Texas Motor Speedway. And with all the NASCAR news complete, let's go ahead and get us ready for the weather forecast for Texas Motor Speedway this weekend as we go on to Danny B. Weather. And once again, Danny B. Weather is brought to you by our friends over at Footy. Remember guys, use code Danny B at checkout when you get your Footy and you can get free shipping. All weekend, it's going to be pretty chilly. If you have a jacket, I definitely make sure you bring it with you as we will be seeing highs in the low 60s and high 50s and we will see low temperatures mostly in the high 30s and low 40s. But there is some good news. There is a 0% chance of precipitation that appears to be in place for all weekend. So should be some pretty good racing. Cool temperatures and a race that should be going into nighttime with this particular package should make for a great race at Texas in my opinion. And that'll do it for this episode of Danny B Needs a Minute. I, I know that was way more than a minute but hey a lot of things happen and I was off for a little bit with everything going on for my wedding. Did I mention I have a wife? Wow how about that? Anyways I'll see you guys next time and you guys have a great day. Bye guys.